Hey everybody, how are you doing today? My name is Michaela Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And in case you're unfamiliar with me, I am a strength and conditioning coach, a personal trainer, holistic nutritionist. I have a degree in exercise and sports science and nutrition science with um, a concentration in strength and conditioning. I do graduate work in the topic um, and I've been helping people improve their body, the, the function and health of their body for 20 plus years now, okay? And so uh, today I'm gonna talk about this whole BBL epidemic, okay? This has been something um, that has been on my mind a lot, okay? And I've been wanting to talk about it. I mean, I've maybe talked about it a little bit before. And by the way, I'm live on my Instagram. I'm gonna save this and repost it to my YouTube page. And I'll probably post it to both of my YouTube pages because it's such an important topic. So I have two pages, The Body Scientist and The Renaissance Amazon, okay? So I'll probably post this to both pages. But, of course, everybody has heard about Jackie O passing away after getting the mommy makeover, okay? Um, I didn't know who she was prior to... My glasses. Um, I didn't know who she was prior to her passing. Um... But the thing is, is that there's so much I want to say. So I'm sure most of you know that BBLs are, I think, the most dangerous cosmetic surgery you can get. And actually, I don't want to just talk about BBLs. Let's just talk about mommy makeovers and plastic surgery in general, okay? Surgery, to me, is something that you should not be doing unless you have to do it, okay? Because any time you get cut open, it's a risk, okay? Anytime you get put to sleep and put under anesthesia and you're getting cut open, there can be problems. There's scar tissue, it's traumatic to your body. And the fact that people use surgery now, surgery, 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 I can um, guarantee that, um, I can guarantee that, uh, I read a comment and it made me, Lose my train of thought. I can guarantee that a lot of people are not going to age well, okay? Um, if you watch my videos, you see I have talked about nature and nurture. I've talked about how sickly this younger generation is. One thing that I noticed with people who are like in their early 20s, they all look so little and prepubescent, right? Like if you look at um, that rapper Lola Brooks, okay, from Brooklyn, she looks like she's 10. You look at Chloe LeRae, she looks like she's 12. You know, like... Aaliyah was thin, but Aaliyah didn't look 12 when she was 17, 18 years old, you know, 19, 20 years old. Um, a lot of this, and then a lot of the dudes, like I'm really glad I'm not in my early 20s right now because the men are so little. A lot of the dudes are super little. They look prepubescent, okay? That's what it looks like when you're not given the right food when you're young, okay? I'm not going to get super into that because I have other videos where I'll go into that. You can check those out. But I feel that even if you look at, what is this? If you look at 20 years ago, okay, 2003. If you look at 20 years ago, um, you look at the girls who were in the music videos. And I hated when they used to call girls video hoes back then. I hated that. Because the way I felt in like the late 90s, early 2000s, the way I felt about music videos was that they found some of the most beautiful black women that we'd, we've ever seen, Okay. When, sorry, every time I do videos, my nose starts itching, sorry. When we look at the, the, the time of King Magazine and all that, I remember thinking to myself, some of these women, if it wasn't for these music videos and this urban industry, this hip-hop industry, they never would have been seen because they were too thick to be considered um, to be considered fashion models back when there wasn't such thing as actual models. Now, models is not a thing anymore either. They just use celebrities for everything, so... That's not really a thing either. Um, and I've already gotten in trouble. Like my, my page, Renaissance Amazon, I did a video about why my Instagram page was deleted. And I created it again. I have 500 followers uh, and I cannot get into the page. And it might be because of the video I posted saying why my video, why my page got deleted. And it's because of me speaking up about the trans uh, stuff. And I have so many more videos to do about this trans thing. Um, some stuff that most people don't know that I think will blow your mind, okay? This is something that maybe like two months ago, like in April, 
I was like, I stumbled upon something and then it kind of led me down a rabbit hole of like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening, okay? Um, because and I'll say it briefly. A lot of times when we hear stories about trans people, it's like men who are trying to be women, right? That's what we constantly hear about. But most people don't know that I think 70, 80% of the people now who are getting gender reassignment surgery and are trans are teenage girls, okay? And mostly white teenage suburban girls, okay? And they're cutting off their breasts. It's just crazy, okay? And the medical community is making it so that, um, hold on. Uh, hold on. So the medical community pushes them to do this, right? And that's a whole, I'm gonna do a whole nother video on this. But when it comes to, I think that a lot of women nowadays look like, see, I, I wanted to speak freely. I wanted to say trannies, but I don't want my, I mean, if I say that, that word, let me say transies. Transits. I don't know, because I don't want to get flagged and my stuff get deleted because I said that word, but it's just easier, okay? And I just really don't care, like, I'm just saying. So, the butt shots and the hip shots and everything came from them. If you look at any videos of women who went to jail for giving girls ass shots or women who were doing that back then, they'll all tell you that they learned it from a transa, transy, okay? <laughs> From a transy. The transies are the ones that the transy male, okay, the, the man that's trying to be a chick, and I'm trying to I'm trying to speak, I don't really care about being politically correct, but I don't want my shit getting deleted anymore, so I'm trying to speak in code as best as I can, even though I just want to say what the fuck I'm gonna say. But all of the they all learned it from a man. Like this this person coached uh, a man, a transy man, transy woman or whatever, a, 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 a shim, okay. Um, this coach named Coach Stormy Williams, um, I didn't know who she was. Apparently, she's a year older than me. Apparently, she was some type of coach. Um, and I get sick of the, the health coaches who got surgery, especially booty shots, okay? That's just, like, you lose all credibility. And that's the thing about this industry. You know why you don't see me associate with a lot of trainers? You don't see me post a lot of the things that you see other trainers post and other nutritionists post, okay? Because a lot of them are full of shit okay and they don't have the academic background i actually have the academic background i actually have degrees in this shit there's levels to this shit okay and not only do i have degrees in it i was in one of the best programs in the country okay that you know i went to university of delaware they had access to equipment that a lot of schools didn't have when i went to university of delaware it was the number two most wired school in america in, the, in america after carnegie mellon okay so the kind of technology and you know, scientific stuff we had was top tier, okay? And so most of these trainers are just internet trainers, okay? They know very little, they got some surgery, and they think, oh, I look a certain way. And all people care about in the fitness industry is how people look. A lot of people are online teaching you bad technique and bad diet, bad nutrition so you can look a certain way. I'm focused, on, looks matter, but I'm focused on longevity, health and longevity. Can we make it to 100? Can you make it to 95 and still have your faculties about you? You don't have dementia. You don't have this chronic problem and that chronic problem because it's not necessary. It doesn't have to happen, okay? So that's my approach, right? But a lot of these trainers are nonsense, right? And so this person, um, this person, Stormy Williams, she had this whole thing, Coach Stormy or whatever, that talking about how she got the, the, the ass shots back in the, I guess, the early 2000s. She was a stripper and she started noticing, you know, like girls... With little booties, all of a sudden, her ass is big, and her ass is big, and her ass is big, and she was like, what's going on? And she found out what it was, and there was a transy that was doing it, and a transy that was trying to, uh, excuse me, a transy that was trying to convince her to do it. And she said that she was like, hell no, I'm not doing that. And then she saw one of her transy friends getting it done, and then, um, and then the transy friend got up and started bouncing his booty, and she was like, so then she did it. Stupid as hell, Okay. My body, like when I was younger, when I was 18, 19, when I was 18, I promised myself to do every single thing I could, okay, to age as gracefully as possible, okay? Like I was thinking about longevity back then because when you see people who get old and they have all these chronic health problems and they're falling apart, something didn't just bite them and make them that way. That's years, okay, 
that's years of not taking care of yourself. Or when you were young, a lot of people when they're young, they abuse themselves. They're living a rough ass life. That shit catches up to you when you get older, okay? And then you didn't look like you didn't been through it, okay? So I never would have injected some random shit into my ass or any part of my body, even back then, okay? So now you have all these girls like, well, I didn't know. I wasn't thinking. It's like, you sound like a dumb bitch. I'm sorry, but you do. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be, you know, I have my practitioner side of me that, you know, when I'm working with somebody, I would never say that to them. But then I have like my personal opinions and it's just dumb, okay? So, but it was coming from the transies, okay? So now you have all this this younger generation of girls that got the, the, the horrible drag queen eyelashes. I don't know how anybody thinks they look cute. I get so sick of looking at these chicks that are in their early to mid-20s. They look terrible. Even the high school students. It's like, why do you have the snuffleupagus drag queen eyelashes on? Then they have lace fronts glued to their head. The, the, the baby hairs. It's like, do y'all have any hair? Like, wh what is this? You know what I'm saying? Their skin looks bad. It's like, but the thing is that a lot of this is coming from the drag queens. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never, I never um, uh, looked up to drag queens, okay? Now, I'm not wishing any hate on them or anything. I'm not saying that anything bad should happen to them. They could do what they do. I've never been amused by drag queens. To me, drag queens where people who are trying to emulate women, they're doing this super dramatic theatrical shit. It's not how women act. They scare me. Like, I, there was maybe like once that I was at a drag show by accident when I was younger. And I was like, never again. Like, it was just way too much. I, I think I went to a gay club, a gay men's club uh, with some people. And I might have been in my early 20s around the entertainment industry. And I remember um, just being like, that's just too much for me. I don't want to see a drag show. I don't, I'm not into the drag queens. But a lot of women are, like, fascinated by them, okay? And so now a lot of chicks look like them. You got the drag queen eyelashes, the drag queen lace fronts, the drag queen ass shots. You're getting all the drag queen makeup, okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with a little bit of makeup. I wear a little bit of makeup sometimes, okay? But when you have on chicks that straight, drag queen makeup is theatrical makeup, where you're transforming yourself. You look like a totally different person. And that's what these chicks are doing. All of that's coming from the drag queens and the transies, okay? Now, um, these surgeries, okay, like this this mommy makeover. Now, I understand, I used to, when, when people said that, um, when, when I would hear women say that they got ass shots or they got plastic surgery for themselves and not for men, I used to not believe that. But now I kind of do believe it to a degree because, you know, my body has gone through changes that... Um, had made me unhappy, where I didn't like what I was looking at. Now, for the first time in my life, I'm looking at my body like, if I could just suck this out and clip this off, like, I, I just was hating it. And the fact that I've always shown my body, I'm a dancer, you know, I'm an art model, I've always shown my body. And so, everybody's been seeing my body for a long time. And now, I'm, and I always felt, well, I didn't always feel comfortable in my skin, because let me say, that's another thing I want to talk about, is body dysmorphia. I, as a trainer, I realized that a lot of people have body dysmorphia. And I used to think that um, that I didn't have that problem. I realized a lot of my clients do, whether it be male or female. A lot of people, the way they see themselves and the way they look is not, you know. But then I started realizing I think I have that problem too because I always had a complex about being skinny. Like I never wanted to be skinny. I was always trying to gain weight, okay? And if I ever lost a couple pounds and somebody told me, you look like you lost a couple pounds, I would want to go into hiding. I literally hated that. I had a complex about that my entire life. And then now I feel like I gained too much weight and I don't like, I'm looking at myself and I'm like, and then I'm looking at my old body and I'm thinking, damn, back then I thought I was too skinny. Now I feel like I'm too thick. Now I miss what I had. I should, and, now, and now I'm afraid to complain too much because shit can get worse. And if my ass goes away, I will be upset. Okay. So that's the reason why. I've always put the work in since I was younger because I'm like, I don't want to take it for granted that I have a nice shape and then it just, it just goes away one day because you're not doing anything. Right. So, um, so I understand, you know, um, when, so I understand how a woman could feel that way. Um, especially when your job depends on your body, right? Like everything I do depends on my body. I'm a trainer. And I know what I'm doing, but I feel like if I don't have a certain look, certain people will be like, well, why am I going to train with you? Because you don't look this way and that way, even though you should never base your trainers just off of looks. 
I mean, there's certain things. Maybe I'll do a separate video about that. But there's certain things you can look at with a trainer and know that they're bad. Like they have bad posture. Like if I'm like this, there's no way I'm a good trainer. Because if I'm sitting like this, I got a weak back. There's no way that you can exercise your back and you got a strong back. You're not going to be sitting like this. I don't never sit like this. I sit up straight because my back muscles are strong and it holds me up. When you have strong back muscles, you don't have to think about sitting up. You just sit up because your back muscles are holding you up. That's why you see a lot of dancers walk with very good posture in gymnasts because they have a strong back. Right? So, um... So, yeah, so there's certain things like that that you can judge. But people, like, expect trainers to be, like, totally lean and perfect looking. So people judge it. So I think to myself, if I, you know, can't do certain things or if I start not looking a certain way, like, it worries me. And then I'm a dancer. So dancing is all about the body, seeing my body. So I can't hide. I don't hide my body, okay? A lot of people criticize me for being half naked you know, being naked, half naked, but it's like, it's my body. My body is my temple. Why would I be ashamed? Why would anybody be ashamed of their body? Like, okay, so somebody is naked. Okay, so I'm naked. So how you making fun of me? Like, as long as I look good, like, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see you making fun of me because I look bad. But the fact that people want to shame, especially women who are showing their bodies, like, like, it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? Um, But still in my head, because everything I do, being a dancer, being a trainer, you know, it has to do with that. I am, you know, I am hyper aware of it. So I realized, okay, I can, I have the issue too. I can understand how a woman could feel like that and want to go get surgery. And people would say working out doesn't always work. Of course, I never agreed with that. I felt like if you put enough time in, it will. But life has shown me some things that's made me say, yeah, you know. But ultimately, I feel like people should do their very best to accept themselves and constantly work on yourself. Like put in actual work. Now, I will say that I cannot blame men because some people try to blame men for women getting BBLs and women getting all this plastic surgery. I absolutely cannot blame men for that because if anything, it has been the men who have told me that I'm tripping. Like I'm looking at myself and I'm not liking a lot of things I'm seeing. And every dude I know is like, you are tripping. Like you look great. You look fine. Like what are you talking about? You know? So, if, and, and what I've noticed from men um, um, no, men and women say stuff about me, <laughs> like, every day, every day, there are men and women that got something to say, um, every single day, and sometimes the men are people that I was talking to, or they were trying to talk to me, or, you know, that it turns into straight insults, oh, you're always naked, <laughs> like, you always showing your body for likes, and da 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 it's like, no, I'm actually an educator, and I teach people how to be healthy and how to take care of their body. And I'm a dancer. So my body is my artistic tool. Like, you know, so that's what it is. Um, but people always have this narrative that if a woman is half naked, she's trying to get attention. You know, and she's trying to get attention, which is like ridiculous. A woman could get attention with all their clothes on. I could be fully dressed and get attention. It's not, that's not it. You know what I'm saying? It's about health. You know, it's about health. Um, but health and art. And freedom, okay? And the pre-colonial mindset is all those things. But it has been the men, like what I've noticed from just dealing with men and knowing men over the years, like there have been plenty of dudes that either I was in a relationship with or, you know, I was messing with and they were attracted to me, but they were also highly attracted to other women who look nothing like me, like totally different body types. And there are some men who have like a specific type. But I think a lot of men like a wide variety of women. And for women, a lot of times we don't understand it. You know, as a woman, you can see another chick that your dude likes and or a dude who you're talking to likes. And you're like, you like her and you like me because you might think that shit looks busted. It's just like with porn. Men and women usually, men and women usually don't um, watch the same porn. Like the things that men will look at, women will think like that shit looks raggedy. Like we just judge differently. Women are actually pickier about that. Women pick apart women more than men do. And so I definitely can't blame a man for that. I'm not going to say that there aren't men who might encourage women. Because I heard in the Dominican Republic, one of my friends told me, dudes with money in the DR, if the girl doesn't have an ass, they pay for her to get one because that's what they want. So I'm not going to say it doesn't happen at all. But I think a lot of it is coming from women themselves and just how, you know, nitpicky we can be about our bodies. Well, a lot of times the men are fine. And if the man is with you, then obviously he's fine with it. Like, 
I used to wish my breasts would get bigger, but they didn't. So I accepted it. I would never get breast implants. And when I was in my early 20s, I realized it's not stopping me from getting dudes. Men still try to talk to me. So like, why would I go do that to myself? You know what I'm saying? Put a foreign object into my breasts, which are very sensitive tissues and risk all kinds of future complications. And the thing is, everybody who had breast implants, I remember like in the 90s, early 2000s, every woman who had breast implants, all the celebrities, they always had a problem. They always end up taking that shit out. So to me, I thought to myself, okay, if all these women who get breast implants always got a problem at some point, imagine what's going to happen with their ass. You sit on your ass, okay? Like the breast is just fat, they're just sitting here not doing anything. Your ass is the biggest and most powerful muscle in your body, okay? You need it to walk upstairs, to run, to do, to hold your whole trunk. It's a part of your core. It's a very important part of your body. A lot of your blood supplies run through your hips, all of that. And, um, and so if women have all those problems with breast implants, what are the problems that women are going to have with their booty? You know what I'm saying? So the fact that people do that is just crazy to me and that it's just so widespread. But the thing is with liposuction, okay? I remember, I told you, I have a degree in exercise and sports science. So when I was in undergrad, I remember learning that if you get liposuction, okay? Let's say you liposuction, liposuction, whatever. A lot of times that fat comes back in a different place. That's what happens when people get liposuction. I always say, what I've learned about studying science and studying the body is that there is no shortcuts with nature. Whenever you try to bypass nature or trick nature, it fires back. I mean, it backfires on you. So you get lipo and then the fat comes back someplace else. And you lipo that and the fat comes back someplace else. And then the other thing, when people get lipo, it, they can get a lot of scar tissue. Anytime you get surgery, scar tissue forms. Scar tissue is no bueno. Okay? Scar tissue will pull the other organs and stuff that's anywhere in the vicinity towards it. Pull things out of whack. Make things stiff. This is the reason why I hate looking at, what's her name? Um... What's that chick's name? Uh, that singer, um, Summer Walker. Summer Walker, I'm going to stare my eyes out looking at her. She is so freaking stiff. Not only is she a terrible performer, but even if she wanted to be better, she's just so stiff. Stiff. She looks like she's made out of glue. Okay? You know why? Breast implants, abs done, butt done. She got her whole face. She probably got like 85 surgeries. Okay? That's not a prescription for long life and health. But then you're like, you're like, you got so much scar tissue in your body. She looks like she can't move her hips. Her hips look stuck. You know what I'm saying? Like your hips should be mobile. I was going to get up and start doing some, but your hips should be, you should be able to, to, to undulate and, you know, move your hips. You don't want your hips stuck in place because you got all the scar tissue from cutting up your abs and getting tummy tucks and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So when you get... These, these procedures, you know, you can get a lot of um, scar tissue. Even from liposuction, you get a lot of scar tissue. Then people start getting hard, okay? These people are getting fake abs, all types of stuff, okay? And then you have all these chicks. Um, then you have all these chicks with these waist trainers on, okay? Those are really bad for, your internal, for a woman's internal organs. So it's all this stuff that's super unhealthy, all right? And then, so the mommy makeover, from my understanding, can be breast uh, surgery, tummy tuck or liposuction, sometimes a BBL, which is, to me, crazy that somebody will come right out of giving birth into going right into surgery and getting a BBL. Very dangerous. It's like, what are you thinking? You have a child to take care of. Is that more important you're going to risk your life because childbirth puts a lot of stress in your body. Even with Jackie O, she had given birth like nine months ago, 10 months ago. Her, her son wasn't even a year yet. Um, this, this scar tissue and excess make you stiff. Yeah. Scar tissue is tight and hard, you know? So if you have an excess of scar tissue anywhere, there's going to be lack of range of motion. You know, like if you have a bunch of scar tissue, um, No, I'm not saying that what the doctors inject you with gets hard. I mean, that's probably true with the ass shots, yes. But I'm saying that when you get cut open, anytime somebody gets cut open to get surgery. Like, I had surgery in my foot when I was in college. I spent years trying to break up the scar tissue that was there. You know what I'm saying? And it took me a few years 
before I could wear heels, okay, or get on my tippy toe. It was years of getting that range of motion back in that joint. So, yes, yeah, scar tissue can make you stiff, okay, and especially when you're getting cut open like that. And when you're getting liposuction, it gives you scar tissue. And some of these girls, if you look at them, they got the fake abs and it doesn't, it looks fake. Like I used to not be able to tell, but I can now because I once had abs like that. My abs are like not as defined as they used to be, but my abs weren't stiff. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a look that I can see where it just looks stiff and hard. Okay. A lot of people want hard abs, but a woman's abs should not be too hard. Okay. Because then it's unhealthy. It really is. So, you know, you're having scar tissue all over your body from doing liposuction and cutting things and da 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 da. Now you're all stiff. People's face looks stiff. You know, they got the the facelifts and everything, and everybody's like face is like stuck. You know what I'm saying? It's not good. It's really not. And then I've also heard that vaginal rejuvenation surgery is also something that is sometimes a part of this mommy makeover. I think somebody's crazy to get surgery on their vagina, okay? Unless you absolutely have to because something terrible happened to you. That's nuts, okay? Like, it just makes me cringe thinking about it, okay? The vaginal tissues are very sensitive, okay? Very sensitive. And to be cutting that, to try to make it tighter, it's like, dude, work the shit. Do exercises. There are vaginal exercises. Use naughty eggs, okay? I've been working with naughty eggs, and um, teaching women to use naughty eggs, some people call them yoni eggs, since 2004, okay? It's 2005, actually. And you can exercise your vaginal muscles. And really, the fitness should start before pregnancy. Like, if a woman is fit before she gets pregnant and has a kid, she's more likely to maintain that. If you were just, if you were just sitting around, and sometimes when people are young, if even if they don't exercise, they probably might just go back to where they were because they're so young. But if you want to increase the chances of not having your body like just out of whack completely after childbirth, you definitely want to be exercising and taking care of yourself way before that. And then you continue after that. But after childbirth is very traumatic in a woman's body. It takes a lot. So after that, you want to be focused on healing, period, healing. Okay. And there's a lot of things that should be done to help a woman heal after childbirth that is, has been lost a lot in our society. And if you work with doulas or you have a midwife, you might get some of that information, you know, um, belly binding and, and, um, working with certain kinds of certain types of herbs and stuff to help, you know, close your hips and close everything. And, you know, um, so there's a lot of, of, of recovery that goes in. And I feel like you should be focused on that and not right out of childbirth and getting surgery or 10 months out of childbirth and you want to do surgery in your whole body. It's traumatic, okay? And a lot of people argue that, yes, like the doctor she went to wasn't board certified. He might have been suspect, and that's that's very true. Um, we don't know why she died because she actually didn't die on the table. She died afterwards. Um, and interestingly enough, it's like, because sometimes these BBL videos come up in my feed, and I see girls talking about the pain they're in, the Percocet they're taking. And you know me and my holistic health, I'm thinking, oh, if she has some cannabis oil, and rub that on the wound. First of all, the cannabis oil will help prevent infections. The cannabis oil will bring down the inflammation and swelling and pain. So you could use the cannabis oil topically, but you could also um, ingest it to stop the pain and it helps you heal, which is way better than taking Percocets and all these medications that they're giving you, right? Um, you want to have nourishing foods. Anytime somebody has any kind of surgery afterwards, you want to have nourishing foods, lots of brothy soups, stuff like that. Um, but the fact that, you know, when they get these BBLs, it's like you're risking a lot because it's very dangerous because if that fat gets injected, gets into your blood supply at all, it can travel to your heart and kill you. And it's like, the fact that people are taking these, these risks is crazy to me. Absolutely crazy. Especially when you have kids, like just put your kids first. Okay. Just please. Um, and I mean, it's like, I, I, I want to have empathy because I understand, like, you know, a person's body is changing. But, you know, as a fitness professional, I think it's really important for people to just put in the work. If it takes you two, three years to get your body to a place you want it to be, then let it take two, three years. Because that, that's going to be longer lasting. 
than just getting all the surgery. When you say belly binding, is that the same as wrapping her stomach with a bed sheet like her African elders always did? That's very interesting with a bed sheet. Never heard of that, but it's probably similar. I don't have a fabric, but yeah, belly binding and every traditional culture has some version of it. Um, I learned I learned it from the Mexican tradition, um, and it is you know it's the material is wrapped around the hip up to about here, and it's helping to close and support the hips and the waist. Okay, some people that see do it, they just put it on the waist right here, like a faja. Um, that's not truly you know you want it to to come down into the hips to close the hips as well and support the spine. And so that's what that is, um, what belly binding is for. And like every culture has some type of tradition. They have vaginal steams with herbs, you know, certain massages that they do, certain foods that were given after childbirth to help a woman recover. That should also be happening during pregnancy and before pregnancy, okay? And not enough attention is being given to that. And Jackie O, someone like her, she had three kids in a very short time period. In traditional cultures, women waited two or three years in between babies because it took that long to replenish her nourish her to replenish her um, nutrient stores, so that she could nourish another baby and have that baby be just as healthy. But of course, in real life nowadays, a lot of people will have a kid one year, next year, and some people will have two, three kids in a two, three year time period. But that is putting a lot in a woman's body. So to do that. To have all those kids in such a short time period and then go try to get a whole surgery on your whole body, a mommy makeover, that's just a lot. Now, again, we don't know why she died because it was afterwards, but I'm just saying it is a lot. And um, I just feel like there are no shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, on my page, I have my page onlyfans.com um, backslash the body scientist. On that page is where I'm going to be talking about case studies. Um, you know, there's a lot of different people I work with, a lot of different uh, health backgrounds and things. And I on that page, I'll be talking about different case studies. And you are welcome to ask questions about whatever you want, and I'll answer them. But I know for myself, you know, I know for myself, I wasn't happy with, like, some extra fat that I saw in my stomach. And it's like, I never had that before. Like, in the past, I never used to even think about that. Like, my abs wasn't even on my mind. People used to always compliment my abs. And I used to never be thinking about my abs. I wasn't doing ab exercises. It wasn't on my mind, right? Um, and so then it came to a point where I'm like, oh my God, like a bunch of things happened to me. Went through some traumatic shit. I feel like it caused my body to change. And so for me, it's like I've been doing castor oil packs, you know. Castor oil packs are good to move the, you know, the limp and move things and and I feel like that's helped with getting some of the excess fat that was on my stomach that I didn't know where it came from. You know what I'm saying? But it's not easy to just like, you, you, I feel like when things happen with your body, your body's trying to tell you something. Like there's a reason for everything. Your body's trying to tell you something. So for me, instead of ignoring it, what my body's trying to tell me and just going and sucking something out or cutting something up and I'd rather deal with it naturally and say, okay, what is my body telling me? Why did my body change like this? Why is my body doing this? Okay. What is what's going on? This is like if you have bad skin. If you all of a sudden have a bunch of like, you know, out outbreaks and pimples and bumps and things on your skin, like your body's trying to tell you something. That's not happening for no reason. You know what I'm saying? So you could just put makeup on it and maybe some chemicals and hope that it looks better. But you're not dealing with why is that happening in the first place? Okay. So you have to get to that deeper issue. It's not just cosmetic. It's also your health. And your body's trying to tell you something. Um, I always saw the woman in my family wrap the bed sheet around their stomach. And they would get in so much trouble for unwrapping it. Good thing you mentioned the belly bonding method. Okay, D. Cole, what country is your family from? I know you said Africa. And they would get in trouble for unwrapping it. How long did they keep that on? Because, of course, a woman has to take a bath. So, like, but, you know, after birth, a woman may not take a bath every day. But you might take it off and take a bath and put it back on. So, did they take it off and put it back on? And, um, yeah, your body does give clues, okay? Your body does give clues about what's going on. And, and also, our body changes. Our body changes as we get older. And that can be, like, 
you know, a hard pill for some people to swallow. And uh, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> you know, like some things happen in my body where I'm like, would I get some type of surgery one day? Like, I never thought I would, you know, but I'm just saying. And I, and, and I want to stick with that. I like I like just being naturally healthy and letting my, you know, the health come through my looks, okay? But health first. Um. So, yeah, ladies, like, I think, and I remember myself, like, back, like, this is like, I, I lived in Atlanta in 2012. So, I remember, it might have been around the, that time when I remember I had a dear friend of mine who passed away. And every time I think about him, every time people start trying to, you know, make me feel bad because I'm showing my body or whatever, I think about my friend Willie and what he would say. And I keep on going, right? Um but I remember he was my, my really good friend Willie. I miss him so much. He passed away in twenty he passed away in twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. I can't remember. But um he used to love the strip club. And I remember being in the strip club with him and in Atlanta, okay? And him pointing out girls, oh that ass is not real, that ass is not real, that and I was like, Willie, how could you tell? I couldn't tell at first. And I don't know that I always still can tell. Like people will accuse girls of having BBLs and I'm like, how do you know she has a BBL? Because I know myself but back then it was ass shots, right? Um, but I know myself that like this could have been like 2010, 2009, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere back then. When I remember being in like places in New York and girls would ask me if my ass was real. And I'd be like, what do you mean is my ass real? Of course it is. So this whole BBL thing, it's like, okay, those of us with real asses, you now people think our ass is fake. I've had, there was a dude that I was talking to. He kept asking me if I got work done. And I kept telling him no. And he's like looking at me like he didn't believe me. So I started laughing because it was funny to me. And because I was laughing, he thought I was lying. He was really convinced. That, like, so now it's like so much fake shit, people can't recognize the real shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I remember him pointing that out. We all know Atlanta always had a bunch of real asses, okay? Just like with Dominicans. Like, I grew up in Washington Heights, New York, around a bunch of Dominicans. And Dominican women had crazy bodies. They always had hips and ass. And So I remember, like, saying one day, this is like over a decade ago, saying to somebody about how Dominican women, you know, they got the craziest bodies and their ass. And somebody said to me, oh, Dominican women get uh, their ass done. They get surgery all the time. And I did not know that. I remember being like, wow. So it's the same thing with Atlanta. Atlanta has a lot of natural asses, but there's a lot of fake ones too. So I guess you could say the same thing about the Dominican Republic or Dominicans, even though I, I can't say I've ever looked at a Dominican and recognized that they had something done. Where I can see it with Colombians, like you go to Medellin, Medellin, Colombia, it's just a bunch of white girls with botched plastic surgery. Like, I don't... Um, but also, Atlanta, uh, uh, Brazil. Brazil was number one in the world at one point for ass surgeries, okay? And I don't know if they still are, but they were. And so we know that there was a lot of natural asses in Brazil, but there were a lot of fake ones too. And so perhaps it's the, the girls who don't have it, jealous of the girls who do, and then they want to go get surgery. But... And one of my really good friends, he's like in his fifties. He is a strip club king. Okay, Atlanta, Miami, whatever. He got a lot of stripper friends. He had stripper friends since the nineties. And when when I was telling him about what this coach Stormy said about how she said that she wasn't when all these girls started getting their ass done, she said she wasn't making money anymore. And my friend, he was like, I don't believe that because he said, you know, he swore like, yo, there's a lot of dudes that like the little booties. There's a lot of dudes that like the skinny girls or like whatever. And I do know that dudes do have a wide variety of things they like. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, while that may be true, I also believe what she's saying, you know, because maybe when there wasn't a lot of big asses everywhere, dudes appreciate it more. And now it's like a big ass competition, you know, and the strip club is a tough place. I mean, I've never been a stripper, but whenever I've gone in one, I've been like, damn, that shit makes you question, re-question your own self. There's some gorgeous women in the strip club, you know? Um, yeah, so, I mean, so with all that being said, you know, I did develop a class called Booty Meat, okay, and it, last summer I had somebody, like I started this class way back in like 2017 when I first moved to Chicago, but it was hard. Because I was filming it myself, and I, I really, it's hard for me to teach that 
and I'm filming it myself. Like you see how I have this camera sitting here, I have to stay in this little square and I can't move around. So I had somebody, um, so I had somebody come film the, um, yeah, but lots of guys with the small titties too. Yeah, there's lots of guys that like short girls, tall girls, big girls, skinny girls. I mean, this dudes are like, I know dudes are like extra thick, tall Amazon, you know, uh, chicks. And then I know, um, dudes that like, um, and then th th there are a lot of dudes who like short girls or really petite ones. Um, a lot of them like the fake stuff. A lot of dudes will say that I don't like fake girls. I don't like fake this. I don't like fake that. But the girls are all the fake shit stay with dudes though. So, you know, like, I mean, I guess it's all about what's the priority to you. Um... But it's just unhealthy. That's all I'm saying. Like, everything about it is unhealthy. Like, people will take in the surgeries very lightweight. So anyhow, yeah, last summer I had somebody come and film these 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 uh, exercises and edit the videos because I'm not an editor. and So I had all that done. And the class was supposed to be on Kajabi. And I had a woman who said that she would help me. Do put it on Kajabi. She's kind of she was kind of my motivation to like bring the class out of retirement because I'm not a technological person. And so when it came down to it, um, when after I got the videos done and everything, she kind of dropped out, so she didn't have the brain space for it. I tried to do it. It was too much for me because Kajabi. If you don't know about Kajabi, it's an online platform for online classes. I think it's a very good platform, but it wasn't easy for me to understand. And I'm in school, and I have a lot of other things to do, and so. I couldn't put the time in trying to figure it out. And so I finally have somebody now who is helping me to put this, make this class live, okay? So it will be live very, very soon. But in my booty meat class, okay, I have a series of exercises where I'm showing women how to do, it's not just focused on the ass either. My booty meat class is focused on the whole body because you want to work your whole body. You don't just want to work your booty, right? So I'm teaching exercises for the whole entire body, how to do them properly, how to understand program design, how to understand progressive um, load, progressive overload, okay, which is how to know when to make stuff more difficult, periodization, because there's a lot that goes into structuring your workouts, the order of exercises that you do, when you do it, how much you do it, why you do all of that, all right? And that's my specialty. So, but even in this course, it's meant to be for the long haul. It's like, you have to put, like, for me, I was always, I told you I was always trying to gain weight. When I moved to Chicago in 2017, I was really focused on my training. So I was going to the gym, like I was staying on it more than I ever had before. I started I started ice skating like a speed skater, okay? Because you look at speed skaters, look at their thighs and their glutes. Just like when you a sprinter, right? Because uh, I could sprint too, but sprinting is more... Str <sighs> sprinting, get to go to a track. There's a track in Chicago that's like a 400 meter track. It goes uphill in two places. I started skating around it quickly, you know, doing my intense leg workouts, eating this good Chicago food. And I gained 15 pounds in three years. It took me three years, okay? So 2020, I had gained 15, 20 pounds by then. And that was of working hard, okay, for some years. So you, the, the, and this is the problem with the fitness industry. People think they sell this, this, quick fix to everything and that's just an illusion you have to be prepared to put in the work it's just like if you want to be a really good basketball player you don't you don't take one basketball uh, course and now you're like a star athlete star athletes are built over years of consistency and as a trainer i remember back in the day girls telling me oh i want to look like serena show me pictures of serena okay you want to look like serena are you willing to get up and run up and down several flights of stairs every single day for years. Because that body that Serena had, that body that I have, it didn't come from going to the gym for a couple of times or a couple of months. It came from years of being consistent and putting in the work. That's what it takes. Okay, you see somebody like Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor has been dancing all her life. And a lot of times dancers have really good bodies because we've been doing that shit for years. Okay? So that's what people have to think about fitness and their body. Everybody wants this quick fix. The fitness industry sells that. And so in my Booty Me course, I'm teaching women the skills of what to do, like how to know what to do for the rest of your life, okay? How to know what to do for the rest of your life, okay? So you don't need me or anybody else to coach you forever. You know what to do no matter where you are and how to do it.
even if you fall off, okay? And strength training is super important as we age, super important. Muscle is what gives us shape. Muscle is a metabolic tissue in our body. Muscle is what moves bones, okay? So when you have somebody who's getting old, you know, they're getting older and they're like, oh, my knees hurt, my back hurts because I'm getting old. No, your back and your knees aren't hurting because you're getting old. Your back and knees are hurting because you spent years not strength training and you're losing muscle because after 25, after 25, 30, we're in a state of decline, okay? Decline. So how quickly you decline depends on what you did before 25 and what you do after it, okay? And you, you, you're, you're, the decline, part of it is losing muscle. And that's why people's metabolism slows down. That's why now they start having knee pains and this pain and that pain because muscles are shock absorbers. Muscles absorb the shock and prevent it from going into our joints, okay? So it's super important. And for the men and for the women, muscles secretes testosterone, okay? What we need for our sex drive and everything. So strength training is, if you do nothing else, if you do absolutely nothing else, you must strength train. Thinking that, oh, I play tennis on the weekends. I play basketball on the weekends. I play golf on the weekends. I ride my bike. That's all great, but you need to strength train too. You need to strength train too. Period, point blank. Super important, okay? I have videos where I explain that, but I'm just telling you. It's very, very important. So I'm going to go outside and get some sun. I think I made my point and... Um, Always think of things I didn't say when I'm done. But it made my point, okay? If you're interested in my booty meat class, definitely look out for it. Um, you can inbox me, but I'll be posting more about it soon. I posted about it in the past, um, but I kind of, you know, it's been in limbo, but it's about to come out of it, I promise. Those of you who've signed up for the course already, I promise you will have it soon. Um, it'll be worth the wait. And... It's way better to do it naturally. And I can tell you a natural booty is better anyway. It feels better. I don't know. I can't say that because some people say they can't tell the difference. But let's see what happens. Let's see what happens 10 years from now. 10 years from now. Like, let's see how many women are jacked up. Jacked up from doing this stuff to their body. Okay? I really wholeheartedly believe you should keep surgery for when you really need it. Okay? Period. That's just my belief. Um, especially major surgeries. Cutting open your breasts. Cutting open your... Ejecting shit in your butt. Cutting your... I don't know what they do with a tummy tuck. You can get hematomas and internal bleeding and all types of crazy ass shit that happens. You trying to do that shit. You over here, you know, like... That's too invasive, all of that. That's your core. Your booty's a part of your core. Your core muscles are every muscle that... Across your all the muscles that cross your hips, so your abs, your back, your, your glutes, your hamstrings. So you messing with all that. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, if you learned something from this video, please like it. Please share it. Okay. Um, follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me everywhere because you never know when my shit might get deleted. And um. If you wake up one day and you don't see me, please find me because my stuff is always getting deleted and it's really not funny because I hate that, but it does. So anyhow, I'm going to be done and I, I wish you all a good day. Take care of yourselves, okay? Take care of yourselves. Put in the work, okay? Send love to your body. Put in the work. Think about the long term. Think about long term. Think about priorities. Think about your family. Think about all that, okay? And I will... Talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.